like i i just saw this conversation about um like when a project isn't going how you want it to go and how how do you what like what's the next step you know Mm -hmm. say if you're sent awful multis right Uh and you're hired to mix it what do you do you know do you ask for more money do you say no? I don't want to do this and refund them. Like, mm. what do you do? I guess that that dude, depends on so many things. I feel like and, you can't uh, make a rule about this. That. This one dude who's a mastering engineer, uh, he works on big stuff now, like mm. like Kid Leroy, uh, Taylor yeah, Swift yeah. kind of stuff. He was like, I just watched this young mix engineer in two years go from seven hundred and fifty dollars a song to two thousand dollars a song, because every single time he was sent a session like that, he did whatever it took to make it better. Yep. You know, you whether that's whether that's picking out new samples, pitching the samples down, redoing a synth bass, retuning stuff. And he's like, he's only getting paid to mix. But guess what? Because he was able to make such a big difference that then justified the higher price. And, um, you know, I feel like Andrew Wade is that type of dude. He is. You know, I feel he like mm-hmm. I feel like he's the type of guy where he wouldn't be like, oh, well, you know, the vocals aren't tuned right. And I'm just mixing this. You know, he's have like, you, no, my name's have you on ever, this. I want it to sound good. Have you ever heard a mistake on anything he's worked on? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I haven't. Exactly. Like, I, yeah. It yeah. sounds perfect. Like, it sounds like he was just like, it has to sound right or I'm not. You know what I mean? And that's something that I feel like. I personally, I need to do more of. I've That's been like trying a, to do more of because I'm like, yeah, you like this. Just have fun doing it. It's not a slog. You're having fun just because yeah. you're not like through with that part as fast as you were through the. Don't worry about it. Yeah, just like I have the sitting. Just I you know, heard another so story about <laughs> working with uh, with Serban. And, you know, because, like, there's kind of, like, this image, you know, with, like, the top of the top mixers where it's, like, they just get a song, their engine, their, like, assistant, like, sets up the session, yeah. does a rough mix, and then they just come through and they're just, like, oh, just 2 dB here, half a dB hey, here, send it yeah. out, you know? But, like, he was going through, like, revision after revision after revision, and the producer, who was also, like, mostly a mix engineer, was, like, listen... I love you. I want to be you. That's how much I love you. (laughs) But this doesn't sound right to me. And so we're going to need to push this harder. I think it was was like the 808 in the song or whatever. And he just looked at him and he just said, okay. And they're on like revision 10, you know? And it's just like, he's just doing whatever he needs to do to make sure the song is what they want. And it's like, I think that that is like, the one thing that sets everybody apart you know it's doing Mm. whatever it takes to make sure that they like it because at the end of the day it's not about us you know yeah i mean sure it is but a little bit but you're not you're really you're really playing the the songs you're really playing a a servitude role uh as especially as like like a mix engineer you yeah, it's work. At the end of the well, day, and, you may you not will, want and also something, you're trying to make them. Sense. You're trying to help this group or artist or band, whatever, out, and like make sure that they they're coming to you and giving you money to make sure that it sounds good. So you got to make sure that it sounds good, like regardless so of what like, that means. I feel like subconsciously, when you know you're working on somebody else's stuff, you're like, <clears throat> this is somebody else's thing. Because yeah. like I've noticed every time I've mixed any of my own music, I'll be like, I mix all the time. I'm just mixing like I do other stuff. It never yeah. sounds like other people's stuff. My yeah. mixes of my own stuff is always, I always have like something that I'm like, God damn, the guitars are so loud in this one. Or like, God, everything's <laughs> yeah, so yeah. bright. Like there's always a huge issue to me, like looking back um, that I don't see in other people's stuff, interestingly, but I think it's just because it's my own stuff. But it sounds different. It sounds yeah. genuinely yeah. different because, like, it comes from a different source, and they want different stuff. Exactly. Yeah, I, there, there, there I mean. was a very similar conversation that I also just saw. Um, basically, the same topic, and this dude was talking about how he just got to like co-produce or maybe fully produce like his first like big record. And so it was his first time working with like one of his idols who was a mix engineer. Oh, that's very cool. And he was like super pumped, you know, but then the mixes come back and they all sucked. Uh, and the team approved all of them. 
And so they came out and he was like venting to this other big producer. And he was like, dude, like, I'm just like really kind of bummed. Like my first big release with a big, big mix engineer, it just kind of sucks. And he, and the dude looked at him and he goes, well, whose fault do you think it is? And he's like, well, obviously the mixers, you know, he's like, look at all of his credits. Why didn't he do the same thing for me? And he goes, because you didn't speak up. You're the producer. It's your fault. that Those mixes didn't come out right. Because mm. you should have communicated it to the mixer. You know, that's cool. And I was like, that's, that's was a like, gut wow. check right there, man. Ooh. That's a and gut like, clip yeah. it, clip it. No, just like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> looking. yeah, that's and, uh, no, that's the one, dude. That's he, that's he really true. He didn't you mention have to any, say uh, it if, you, if you're hearing something. You know. He didn't mention any names, but like, I'm assuming <clears> like these were dudes who were like putting in work in the mid 2000s, you know, and it was definitely a pop record. And so it's like, yeah. It was probably someone at that level of like Manny, Serban, something like that. It's like those guys don't always get it. You know what I mean? They've been yeah. in the industry forever. So it's like they've, they've gone also, through so many different phases and worked yeah, on so many different genres. Say. You know, it's like you have to make sure that you're communicating properly, you know? And they've uh, gone and from was, they've gone from the like the dance era of the two thousands to like the alt pop rock era of like the late aughts and then to like all the way to now where like it's trap and 80s and like yeah, if you yeah. tried to mix all of those the same way and be a closed-minded mix engineer like you're not it's not gonna work right That's, so they have to that, be like this is that we need guidance this is actually something that really hit me really hard this year was i was like i can't be like a music mixing engineer i have to be a sound mixing engineer it's music you know what i mean mm -hmm. like when it's like it's not about like i know i've really thought about this when i started mixing some edm which i've not done a lot of but i started doing it recently for my friend ian for his project hyper potions and <clears throat> doing that stuff i'm like i don't know what the fuck the synth like what does this equate to and i'm just like it's just a synth and i'm like it's just a sound it just takes up a space and it sounds a certain way and it does a certain thing. Just find out where it goes. You know what I mean? Yeah. And when you look at everything like that, you can do so many more different genres, but you do have to be a little familiar with stuff. Exactly. You gotta sure. like, but you can get um, at least close. Yeah, yeah. You can get like, that's a very easy way to have a nice like start. Like, um, yeah. Also, I just looked it up. Serban started mixing in 1994. Whoa. that's crazy yeah that is insane Jeez. dude that is insane yeah, he has been dude. mixing since nevermind came out and he's still mixing think about how different pop music is now you know what i mean oh god that i like think about this nuts. sometimes i'm like what am i gonna be mixing in 20 years <laughs> like